In this lesson, you will learn a series of commands used to deform or change the shape of objects. These include trim, extend, fillet, chamfer, stretch, and lengthen. Let's dive right in. Open the deformation sample file and click the trim command on the modify panel. Basically, the trim command is divided into two phases. In the first phase, you're prompted to select trimming edges. And then in the second phase, you're prompted to select objects that you wish to trim with those edges. So I'll go ahead and select these two objects as trimming edges, and then I'll press Enter to move on to the second phase of the command. It says select object to trim. So I'll go ahead and click right here, and that is trimmed off where it crosses the trimming edge. And I'll select this object right here. And that part is trimmed off where it crosses this trimming edge. If I click here, nothing will happen because no trimming edge passes through that particular segment. I'll press Enter to end the command. There's a more efficient way of using trim, and I'll show you this shortcut. Click Trim, and this time, instead of explicitly selecting trimming edges in this first phase, Let's skip over that by using the default option, Select All. All you have to do to execute that option in the angled brackets is press Enter. So just press Enter, and you move on right away to the second phase. Now all the objects in the drawing are potential trimming edges. So I can go ahead and click on Objects to trim them. The part that I click is the part that gets deleted. I'll press Enter to end the command. Extend is like the sister command to trim, and it's located on the same flyout. And it likewise is divided into two phases. So instead of individually selecting boundary edges for extend, let's use the shortcut Select All. Press Enter. And now everything in the drawing is a boundary for everything else. So I can go ahead and click on an object to extend it where it touches another one. I'll click here, and it gets extended. I'll click here, and nothing happens because this projected out doesn't hit anything. But if I go ahead and extend this line, I could then extend this one to meet it. You can also extend arcs. I'll click here, and it's extended to the next edge. If I click the arc on the other side, it gets extended all the way around to the first boundary that it encounters. Another interesting feature of both trim and extend is if you hold down the shift key, the command inverts to be the opposite command. So I'm going to hold down the shift key, and I'll go ahead and trim objects by clicking on them. You see? I'm actually trimming within the extend command. I'll press enter to end the command. Now let's go back to Trim. I'll press Enter to select all edges, and then I'll trim something right here. I'll hold down Shift, and then extend something. So in this way, the two commands are interchangeable. You can trim and extend all from one command. I'll press Enter to end. Next, let's take a look at Fillet and Chamfer. Fillet first. Click the Fillet tool. And the way that this works is it puts an arc between two selected objects. And the size of the arc depends upon the radius value that you set. Click the Radius option, and then type in a value. Now I'm not too sure about the scale of this drawing, so I'll set the radius interactively by clicking two points. I'll click here and here to set a radius value. Then I'll go ahead and click two objects and they're joined with an arc that has the radius that I specified. I'll press the spacebar and fill it two other objects together. How about this one and this one? They have to be extended in order to meet in that curve. If you try to fill it parallel lines, this is what happens. They will be joined with an arc. Note that this arc doesn't have the fillet radius, however. 
Its size is determined by the distance between the parallel lines. The fillet command is also used with a zero radius to join objects in a corner without making an arc at all. Let's try that. Fillet, radius, zero, enter. Then I'll go ahead and click two objects, like these two, to join them in a perfect corner. Let's try that again. Press Enter to repeat the command, and then click two objects to join them in a corner. The part of the object that you click is significant. Let me undo and repeat fill it. If I click these two lines here and here, I get a different result. The rule of thumb is that you click the object on the part that you want to keep. Chamfer works very similarly to fillet, and it's on the same flyout. Instead of putting an arc in between two lines, it puts a beveled line, and the size of this bevel is controlled by two distance values. Click the Distance option, and then either type in a numerical distance, or specify one by clicking two points. I'll press Enter to move on to the next prompt, and then I'll go ahead and chamfer two lines together, and it creates this bevel. I can do that again. I'll press Enter, and I'll chamfer these two lines together. And again, they're created with an additional line segment between them. Let's take a look at the stretch command. This is an unusual command because the way that you select objects is unique. You have to select objects using a crossing window. So if I wanted to stretch this arc and these two lines, I'd have to go down here, click a point, and create a crossing window. Press Enter to get out of Select Objects mode, and then specify an arbitrary base point. Move the cursor, and you'll see that you're stretching those objects. I'm changing the shape of the objects because I've picked them up, essentially, from their selected endpoints. I'll click again to end the stretch command. Let's try that again. Stretch. I'll click here and create a crossing window. Press Enter. Click a base point. Move the mouse and click again. Lengthen can be used to elongate lines and arcs but it doesn't change their orientation like Stretch does. You can find Lengthen by using the Modify slide out, and it's right here. Lengthen. Let's lengthen some objects using a percent value. I'll click the percent option, and I'll type in 150 for 150 percent. Press Enter, and then click on an object. I'll click right here, and the object is lengthened 150%. It depends on which side you click. If I click over here, the object will be lengthened that way. If I click on this arc, it will be lengthened on this side 150%. Lengthen is preferred if you want to be sure that you don't change the orientation of an object. I can just make this longer and it stays at the same angle. Whereas stretch will change the angle and the length at the same time. In summary, you have learned how to deform objects using a series of specialized commands. It's a good idea to practice using these tools on your own so that you develop your intuition about choosing the right tool for the job.